evening and welcome to SMNI. You're watching Business and Politics. I'm your host, Dante Klingkam. Our topic this evening is shipping and logistics, which is, of course, how consumers like me and every one of you get the things that we cannot live without. In essence, this industry links Filipinos with the rest of the world. As history reminds us, the Philippines was on a global trading route. The Manila-Acapulco trade linked east and west. Over time, though, other countries have surpassed the Philippines. And in recent years, domestic and external factors have challenged virtually every sector of the economy, but in particular, shipping and industry. To share with us the latest from the sector, we have invited Patrick Ronas, who has been involved in the shipping industry for several decades and has been at the helm of several companies in this field. He is currently president and CEO of M Starship Agencies Incorporated, Container Bridge Philippines Incorporated, and the Association of International Shipping Lines. The association fosters closer interaction between international shipping companies and the Philippine government. As the association president, Mr. Ronas has laid the groundwork for the understanding of the industry of international shipping with private enterprises and the government. We will ask Mr. Ronas, how can the Philippines reclaim its status as a premier trading hub in Asia? Patrick. Mr. Patrick Ronas, thank you for making time for Business Spot. It's good to see you again, the first time since the pandemic. No, no? My pleasure, Clink. It's good to be here again. It's been some time. Yes, you know, I think it's been three years since yes. we had you over for an interview at the Manila Times. Right. So many things uh, have happened. Right. Be before we get into it, maybe we should ask you, how is your industry doing? Uh, maybe just barely a few years now after the pandemic and uh, just a little bit over a year into a new government. How's, how's your sector? Well, uh, to put it this way, Clink, uh, you know, uh, all of us were actually affected by the pandemic at sure. that time. Volumes really dropped. We closed everything down. Uh, we were one of those essential uh, people that can go out uh, do our stuff because uh, shipping will not stop. I mean, yes. ships will not stop. They will continue to call. Uh, the cargo uh, that we carry uh, is considered essential, so it needs to move. So we were there while, while, where, where people were all locked up in their houses, uh, being safe. Uh, shipping industry, the terminal operators, your truckers, or those in the logistics sector were actually out there, you know, uh, boots on the ground, mm. uh, making sure that this cargo will move, or mm. containers will move and gets delivered. Oh, well, you're saying everything is. Places. You said everything was shut down, but you guys couldn't shut down because we. No, you, we you, cannot, we you, you had to ship in the food, the goods, correct, the PPE, the. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We, we we had to do all that, and uh, at that time, business was really uh, very much affected. Mm. So we were uh, before the pandemic hit in 2019. The volumes were very strong. The volumes were very good when you compare it to the previous years prior okay. to the pandemic. So as we go along, uh, 2020 happened. It was really, really a bad year for shipping. Yeah. Um, 2021 came. So we were all. We, all we wanted was we hoped that the volume would go back um, to pre-pandemic uh, levels, which is 2019. Uh, but in 2022, surprisingly, by uh, mid-September. We hit the 2019 volumes, and all the way uh, we we coasted by. But as of the moment, because of what's happening, uh, what's happening around the world, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see that the uh, war in uh, Ukraine, in Ukraine and Russia would really affect us. But uh, the next couple of months, it, it showed uh, a bit. You know, I mean, um, as the global economy got affected, inflation shot up through the roof. Your fuel costs uh, rose, food prices also went up. Mm. So right now we're seeing a very uh, marginal increase in volumes uh, when compared to last year's, I which see. is unprecedented. Usually we get a 5% a increase in volume uh, year on year. So this time it's really very slow. It's really so very would you say marginal, it's less than the typical growth that yes, you see? Yes, um, okay. right now I think uh, uh, first half, there was only a 1%, 1.15% oh, increment thin. in our imports. And, uh -oh. and our imports is a good signal about how the how the economy is doing, considering that not only do we import finished uh, products, mm -hmm. um, also food, construction yeah. materials. Yeah. Uh, we also import our raw materials for our exporters. So we see exports, 
at least the commodities that are being carried by ships uh -oh. uh, to be less than last year's by about 5%. Right. So which means the other countries are not really buying that much. So right. I don't know if there's... Uh, if they're oversupplied or, or if the warehouses are full, but, mm. but that's a general situation. The yeah. volumes has not gone up, but it, it has grown. Okay. Definitely it but has grown. But not as much as, but not as, as, much much as, as we expected. Expect, yeah. Yeah. So do, do you think from, from the Philippine perspective there is uh, a problem with demand, that uh, the growth is small, uh, she said marginal because demand is soft, or is it more of the supply side that... Um, uh, where we're having you, ship, you mentioned Ukraine. I've, I've been hearing in other industries that, you know, they they cannot make their goods because the the parts or the raw materials are not getting to them. Or if yeah. it's getting to them, it's very expensive, right? right? Or is it a combination of of both I supply a, and demand? Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Okay. okay. Uh, take for example, uh, sure, we don't trade much with uh, Ukraine. Okay. Uh, but then Ukraine exports a lot of grain. If you stop uh -huh. the supply of grain from Ukraine, then what, what will they do? They'll buy into other markets where we buy. I see. And it's, you know, it's, again, it's supply and demand. Right. Uh, in anything, there's always supply and demand. It comes into play all the time. Right. So same as what's happening with rice. India right. stops uh, uh, exporting, exporting rice here. Yeah. So the buyers from India, where do they, we, we don't buy from India much. So right. I mean, very little, but. But those but who, who buy where we buy from, they will, yes. they will they, buy they'll, more. They'll buy from them. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I was reading yeah. the papers this morning and I yeah. see some people saying that the price of rice will go up by something like certain percentage points because right. of that. So right. that's the way it goes usually. We don't think it will affect us, but then eventually it hits us really. Right. Uh, in, in, or, or, yeah, no, indirectly. Yeah, yeah, indirectly. Yeah. Yeah, indirectly. So I mean, what, yeah, what about the, the government? They're, they're uh, a little over a year now into office. Uh, uh, has that created some optimism in, in the shipping and logistics industry? Uh, is it more of the same from the Duterte government? Or what's, the, what's the situation now? Okay, one thing that I can, I can I, well, personally, you know, what I can see... Uh, the president has been uh, doing some travels all around. It's yeah, very, probably. very much welcome. You know, you have a, you have a president who's a salesman. Okay. I was in sales before, so you really have to see yeah. a person for you yeah. to um, start uh, start trade. So, and I think he has done that. He's successful. Okay. Got promises of investments all around. Okay. Um, but I think uh, uh, we have to tread uh, carefully with our relationship with China. Okay. Again, I'm not an expert you know, in geopolitics, sure. but uh, you see the reason why... You see it on your bottom line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. And, and uh, put it this way, uh, most of the products that we import, I think about 70% of them would come from China. Okay. Our raw materials, some of right. the food that we eat. Yeah. Uh, you know, even the potato chips, U.S. brand, <laughs> you check on them, it's made in, uh, it's made in China. So, yeah. So that's the, that's the way it goes. So we import a lot from China. They're the manufacturing uh, giant. Yeah. They, 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 they do that all, all yeah. over. So, so I think we have to tread carefully as far as, the, as, far as that is concerned. Yeah. And um, yeah, we have to just make sure that uh, a good thing about it is that uh, the ports are, are uh, ready. The ports are open. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we didn't have the same congestion as what happened uh, during the time of the pandemic when all ports were closed. Right. And then when they open up, um, when they open up, when China opens up, um, they work really fast. Right. So then you have all these ships racing to get to Manila. Right. So when they get to Manila or when they get to other ports, um, Carrera, yeah, yeah. The first one who comes in, uh, needs to be served, but meanwhile the others are waiting. Right. We had ships waiting outside for something like 12, 15 days at, at, at one time, and you can just imagine the cost, right. the cost of having these ships wait. Right. And and typically, how how fast is that turnaround uh, before the pandemic? Then? Oh, it was fast. You, maybe you'd wait for maybe about three, four hours, and you get you okay. get to birth, and your operations will start. More maybe about. Ma mahaba na yung a day eh, during, right. uh, and, and when that happens there's usually uh, some other factor like right. the weather right, you know, right, like right. the weather or you had a long holiday and, right uh, and I think I remember you were talking before when uh, we had that interview in the Manila Times it cost thousands not just fuel alone is expensive oh yeah, of course. and of course the man the manpower the time the opportunity cost of course. But, yeah. yeah 
uh, just to just to charter charter you know uh, some of these ships are basically chartered you know, right. the, the shipping lines they don't they don't own the ships they they charter it from somebody else parang right. uh, there's a company he invests in ships but he yeah. doesn't run the service they don't manage it he yeah. just gives it to you and yeah. you pay him a you pay him a daily rental yeah so usually um, at that time uh, pre pandemic uh, uh, a 2,000 TEU ship maybe would have cost you something like maybe 5,500, 6,000 dollars a day okay. uh, to charter. Right. Uh, during the pandemic, it went up to something like 20,000. Yeah. 22,000 dollars. Yeah. A day. So you know. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to ask you a stupid question, and sure. then, I mean for the viewers who are not familiar with the the business, why should they care? Uh, well, okay. Uh, Do they care because the, 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 those costs are passed on to the goods that they, you know, eventually buy the, the end consumer? Is that yeah. is that it or, or something g else? Yeah. Uh, Clinker, uh, you know, a space on a vessel is like a commodity. Yeah. Uh, so it plays. If it's if it's short, it's it's a supply and demand. It, okay. You know, then in any commodity, it's a commodity. Right. So mm -hmm. what happens is that uh, if there are not enough ships in the market or not enough ships to carry the cargo, okay. Area, then people fight for space okay. on that ship. Okay. So then there's a tendency in a um, tataas yung presyo talaga. But okay. Then it's Inflation, open. yeah. Inflation, like right now, you know, freight rates are falling. Because there's there's a lot of space. There's not that much cargo moving, so maluwag, maluwag na siya. Now, one thing about um, you know container shipping is uh, is revolutionary. Um, uh, it's like your chat GPT. And when when it came around, when it came around, uh, it revolutionized trade. Like uh, a container, uh, a container vessel can carry multiple types of commodities and of smaller quantities. Uh, because prior to that, you had to um, actually charter a whole ship just to carry your carry your cargo, and and um, that's where the problem is. Uh, where do you get enough ships to carry yeah. that much cargo on a regular basis? Wherein, if it's containerized, it's unitized, and it, it and it moves around. So right now, um, um, what do they say? They usually say 90% of what you see around you has been carried on the ship. Right. I was it carried on a ship uh, to get here? So that's 90% of everything. Um, the raw materials, maybe, maybe it's made in the Philippines, the chair that you're sitting on was made yeah. in the Philippines, but, but, uh, but even in I'm the sure Philippi the materials. Uh, <laughs> but even in the Philippines, we're an island, so it, 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 it may come to, from uh, in the now or Visayas. Yeah, you, know, you, have, yeah. To, you yeah. have to move it around. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how important it is. So anybody in their house right now, if they will take a look around and they'll say, no, no, this is not Philippine bait. I mean, it has to be, it, it, it has was to come moved from by somewhere. a ship. It has <laughs> come from somewhere. Yeah. So, so, so that's how important it is. We're, and right now, as, as you see, people keep talking about the last mile, the yeah. last mile, the last mile delivery, last mile here. And the last mile is important because it yeah. gets to your place. But hold on. Sino ba yung first mile? Who yeah, brought that thing to the last mile? Kami yun. Yeah. So from the factory. Ano, yeah, from the factory. From the factory or the port. Pumasok sa Pierre ng Pilipinas yan. Yeah. Hinandel ng mga kasama natin sa terminal. Binabayan, dinideliver ng mga truck driver or truck operators. And they kill ng customs. So, uh, the supply chain is alive. Eh. There are a lot yeah. of yeah. a lot of players in the in the supply chain or in the logistics chain that has to function perfectly. Right. Now, we have to take a quick break, but before we go, I was wondering if I can just ask one quick question. So, uh, with all of these things, are you optimistic? Not optimistic about about uh, about the next six months and maybe even 2024. Um, I think I'll say uh, I'm well. I'm an optimist, Clint. Okay. So I'd always say I'll, I'll always think. I always think positive. Sabi nga nung boss ko dati, an optimist is a misinformed pessimist. But uh, <laughs> so, but nevertheless, okay, we're hitting the bear months, you know. Okay. For, uh, after all, so we're we're, the we're on months, the and that's usually the peak season. Yeah. Volumes okay. are usually on a sine wave, so yeah. it's go low and then go high. But usually, uh, I mean, you go hit the bear months and. Uh, you never can stop Christmas, no, right. regardless. Uh, Especially in the Philippines. Happens. Especially in the Philippines. It starts, in, it starts next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Ranis, we'll just take a quick break. Uh, this is Business of Politics. Uh, please stay tuned.